Nikki Diosi and I am from Maroti LTD from Hungary. We are one of the distributors for Picoscope in the country and I proudly present you uh, one of our case studies which is I think rather interesting regarding a rattling motor of a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Let's get started. So what we are going to talk about today? Um, first, we're going to uh, speak about the full descriptions and what we already know. Then we're going to set up a diagnostic strategy. We're going to have a discussion about the uh, used equipment and the safety warnings. Then I think the most interesting part is the picoscope measurements themselves. And then at the end, we're going to have an evaluation of the results and uh, the discussion about what was uh, the result for, for a specific problem. All problems starts with the same, uh, uh, same manner. So there is a cause which leads to a failure, which has a symptom. And then at the end, the customer, the end customer has an experience about that failure. In this case, it was a paper pilot plug-in hybrid version of it from 2016. It had rattling of harsh vibrations, which is coming from the engine and it seemed like it had some sort of correlation with the noise of the vehicle. It almost felt like it, uh, it was coming, uh, it, was, uh, it almost felt like it was an ABS, which was the There were no full codes on the display. In the ECM, uh, the ECM memory, and uh, of course, all the operating points and live data were within the normal interval. So, everything is okay. In the previous garage, uh, the wheels had been balanced, and the suspension belts had been checked, and they seemed to be okay. First, let's get familiar with, with the system, but we don't go. developed by Toyota itself. Uh, in this first cycle, we will find two motor generators, one of them called an MG1, and the, the other one is MG2. And there is a DC, is an internal combustion engine. And these are all connected uh, to a collection of planetary fields. In our case, the most important thing is that the internal combustion engine has no direct connection to the driven fields, but the MG2. MG1 has only a uh, starter and a generator function, whereas uh, MG2 is responsible for the traction and the region of the braking as well. Another important thing is that this PSD is located next to the internal combustion engine in the engine bay, and it is under uh, the inverter converter assembly, so it is really uh, embedded uh, in the, into the car. Each NG or motor generators has uh, its own resolver. Uh, since they are synchronous type of electric motors, their exact uh, angular speed of position is highly, highly needed by the inverter. So, this is our strategy, this is our uh, diagnostic strategy. Um, we know that all tractive torques are in direct connection with NG2 in this example. And there is an oscillation regarding uh, uh, the traction forces and traction uh, torques, and this could be due to the uh, due to the following things. First, is it could be a physical condition of the wheels and the transaxle or the differential. It could be the condition of the MG2, the motor itself, the stator, uh, the uh, coils, the insulation uh, resistance. There could be a problem with the air gaps, for example, or the planetary gear set, the PS itself. There could be a problem regarding the operation of the inverter. There could be a problem with the, uh, uh, with the control uh, frequency of the inverter module. There could be some sort of problems with the IGBTs. So it could be uh, well controlled, but some of the IGBTs are bad, probably. There could be a uh, speed position uh, problem with the synchronous motor, so a misaligned resolver, for example, or it could be a resolver condition problem, so 
let's say one of the coils of the reservoir is 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 uh, uh, fatal or or there is a some sort of resistance or it could be anything else this is a hypothetical list uh, where each and every stage leads to one another of course if measurement goes badly let's say we can identify for example the IGBTs as the cause of all our problems um, then we do not have to follow the list anymore albeit uh, the list can uh, the list this list can alter any time depending on what life is throwing at us uh, life uh, of a diagnostic technician or test engineer is never easy in my op honest opinion uh, it's always a good thing to start with the most likely cause um, it was not a mistake to imbalance the wheels because it, it looks so obvious it was so self-evident and it, it's such a common problem albeit it was likely to be done unnecessarily but we will test it out also if uh, you cannot say uh, 100 percent from one measurement one single measurement from the list that one particular component is correct or not always think about uh, is, it, is it worth to follow the testing uh, further on, on, on the list, which is relatively time and energy efficient, rather than, for instance, uh, take out the whole engine? So it is, it is absolutely up to us. Before starting all the measurements, it is very important uh, to share with you the safety warnings regarding uh, the measurements. Since we are working on a hybrid car, it has its own hybrid, uh, high voltage system with it. Therefore, it is very important that uh, in order to uh, make uh, these measurements or some bits of, of uh, the further measurements, which I'm going to show you, uh, you must be a specialized uh, technician with certification in the field of, of HV systems. You must have adequate personal protective equipment, so-called PPE. You must have insulated tools and isolated working area. You must have appropriate diagnostic measuring devices. And you must have technical data and official procedures regarding the HV system. And at the end, never work alone. So uh, always find a company, uh, your colleague, uh, in order to uh, not get into um, uh, very risky situations. So in this slide, uh, we're going to uh, have a discussion about what equipment we were using uh, uh, for, uh, for the following uh, uh, tests. First things first, we used uh, the new Picascope 4425A and the new EV kit, which uh, uh, contains lots of very very interesting uh, measuring devices and probes we were using all the current clamps all the three current clamps uh, of course the 2000 uh, amps uh, current clamps i'm talking about we were using active differential probe as well also the dolphin clips and the uh, measuring needles or, or needle probes and also we were using picoscope's nwh kit uh, the three channel version and uh, for, uh, we use the three axis accelerometer and uh, the microphone device as well. And I can't emphasize enough that you must have adequate PPE for the measurements. So, this was our very first measurement, but before I get into the analysis of, of the results of these measurements, um, I would like to share with you some, some idea. So, uh, NVH accelerometer was placed on the driver's seat, seat console. Um, you should really mind the correct positioning of this device because it can really um, uh, uh, affect uh, the results of your measurements. Also, always take care of the input data, such as the tire dimensions. So if you mistype it or you give a wrong input, then you will have wrong output, of course. It is a hybrid car and the given problem occurs both when the EC is running and when driving on full electric. Thus, if we, if we think logically, uh, we can eliminate the internal combustion engine as the cause of our problem. 
Uh, never say never, of course, uh, but it is likely that the engine, the ECE, has absolutely no problem. Uh, we had uh, we uh, had a Mongoose Pro uh, OBD uh, dongle which was connected, therefore we can get lots of information from the OBD, uh, default live data such as RPM, speed, etc. The engine was not running, so we were um, uh, driving full electric, uh, in full electric mode. Therefore, uh, here uh, on this slide, you cannot see any RPM value. So you can see, you can see the, the speed itself, but you cannot see any RPM values at all. Um, we can eliminate engine speed vibrations at all because of this, since it was not working. Um, we all know that the imbalance, uh, imbalanced wheel can cause uh, such an experience like harsh vibrations through the suspension uh, towards the cabin. Um, imbalanced wheels are always indicated by excessive first order harmonics coming from the wheels. It is a very good practice to look at the second order as well, um, which can indicate ovality, for example, or other imperfections of the wheel or, or the rim. Um, of course, all of these shall be okay, since the wheels were balanced before uh, in another workshop, uh, but uh, I think never miss a chance to measure something uh, instead of getting mislead eventually by someone else. So we will check this uh, as well out. There is no propeller shaft since it is a front, uh, front wheel drive car but uh, there is a transaxle so called the BSD, which I mentioned before, and this combines all the torques of the ECE and two motor generators uh, at once in a coaxial planter gear set. Um, newer models and other manufacturers may differ from this um, layout by splitting the planter gear set into multiple axes, um, but in this case it is not an important thing. So now I minimize myself in order to uh, have a closer look on the measurement itself. Um, we could repre reproduce the vibrations with the maximum amplitudes between um, 15 and 40 miles per hour, which is 25 and 65 kilometers per hour uh, respectively. Uh, we are speaking about both acceleration and deceleration. So here, you can see this is the acceleration part and this is the deceleration part. All right, uh, we might need other specific parameters other than wheel speed related harmonics. We shall record one of the first slides where we went through all the things we would like to measure. Firstly, we would like to get an idea about the condition of the differential, the uh, motor generators and the PSD itself. When speaking about um, motor generators, uh, we are really focusing on MG2 primarily since it has a direct connection with the driven wheels. When the wheel is turning, no matter which direction, the MG2 must also. Though there is a bit of complication here when talking about the ratio between the MG2 and the wheel speed. Um, there's not just the final gear. Uh, to be frank, there is a so-called motor speed reductor device, uh, which, uh, uh, which is another planetary gear set, uh, practically working the opposite way around uh, than the name suggests, but never mind, uh, uh, which we need to take care of. Um, altogether, for every wheel rotation, there is uh, eight point, nearly 8.6 rotation of, of the MG2 rotor, uh, but we are interested in the speed of the ring gear just before the final gear, uh, then this value drops to 3 point, nearly 3.3, 3.26. These are all OEM values, and I cannot emphasize enough the importance of good input data. If you have incorrect input, you will have incorrect output as well. With the help of add variables options, you can see just above me, it was a child's play to add these two main frequency setups, which I named M as a speed of the final ring gear and R for the actual speed of the MG2. I also added some of the harmonics as well. 
Here I must tell you that it is a good practice to eliminate even harmonics because of the symmetrical layout of the device and uh, only care about the odd values or the odd uh, harmonics. There is a uh, good reasoning behind this, but I reckon I do not want to get into Fourier series uh, expressions. No one cares truly. Um, it can be seen that the real specific frequencies has more or less nothing to do with the harsh vibrations, which is a good sign. So we can corroborate that uh, the wheels are looks okay-ish. Speaking about the condition of the MG, um, if we would encounter high amplitudes at third or fifth harmonics, uh, it would be likely due to the impurity of the armature, so I'm speaking about the stator windings. Uh, air gap with fluctuations between the stator and the rotor. But it is not the case. Uh, but for now, uh, probably the NG, NG has no physical problem at all. Albeit, there are two well distinguished peak frequencies. So one of them is here, and the other one is here. So we were talking about before um, the uh, M and the R values, which are here and here respectively, but these are really, uh, we can neglect these. But these ones are quite interesting. One of them is in the same uh, region as which has nothing to do with anything known yet. Um, by manual adjusting, it turned out that, <laughs> and it's very interesting, that it is the two-third order of R, which is more of a job. Uh, it means something that is occurring every two-third thirds of the, of the model. Since we know it is a three-phase model, we start to think that it might lead us uh, to one of the imbalance of the phases, probably. Moving to the analysis of the deceleration side, so we are here at this hill. It is visible that M1, first order of motor generator, is missing from the high amplitudes. But there is another player in the field, namely one third order of M, which is also bizarre. It is extremely bizarre. It starts to be extremely bizarre. And this is here. But also we have two third as well. So that two extremely bizarre harmonic orders, which has high amplitudes. Um, this leads us to a consequence that something is wrong with the phase. Uh, one of the phases or, or two of them or, or something to do with the phases. The control of the inverter, for example, or something around that part. Uh, the 3D invert, the 3D map of the frequencies, uh, which can be see, seen just above me, uh, shows us the correlation between the high amplitudes and the one third and two third and first order of MG2. And uh, this is true. The correlation is true. It is not just the fortunate effect of average values over time. So now moving towards audio spectrum analysis. We want to have information about the inverter and its operation. There is a fairly convenient option for this. Using the NOH microphone for analyzing inverter, um, and this is a non-intrusive test. Also, we do not have to worry about, the, about high voltage. Of course, we always have to worry about HV when working on such a vehicle, which has a HV uh, system, but we are not under constant danger. Let's put it this, this way. Um, this image shows the importance of alignment and positioning of the microphone hat. Uh, in this case, uh, the microphone was fixed just above the engine bay. The idea behind this was to pick up the high frequency noise of the inverter uh, made by rapidly switching IGBTs. Uh, IGBTs are uh, short term for insulated gate bipolar transistors. And when these um, IGBTs are switching, uh, we can hear this, 
uh, whenever the car is in ready mode. Given by the manufacturer, manufacturer the actual switching frequency of the IGBTs are uh, exactly 5 kilohertz all the time no matter what load we have have all day all night since the motor has a star connection there is uh, an apparent uh, switching frequency between the phases which is 2.5 kilohertz I'm not going into uh, the explanation but there is an apparent um, um, switching frequency as well therefore we added these two variables um, and these uh, frequencies are set in stone, so uh, the, these are fixed values. Although this figure shows us an, an successful implementation. Uh, at the observed point, uh, so we can see uh, the inverter and the inverter apparent. I just uh, want to show this. So this is the uh, this is the actual, and uh, this one is the apparent. And we can see here that uh, there are no real peaks present. But there is one peak here, which is around 3.8 kilohertz, and it is likely the throttle body. So this is what we can hear pretty much. So we followed up the measurement, and there was a uh, lot of maneuvering to find a perfect spot for this measurement. It was right above the lid at the uh, motor generations uh, connections on the inverter. Um, and of course <laughs> there was a pillar which was needed in order to muffle the throttle by the squeaking noise. So now uh, here we can see that the two um, two frequencies, two main frequencies, which we uh, really searched for, uh, could be seen here. So one of them is here, and one of them is here. Unfortunately, we can see that there is a, uh, a third order uh, frequency, which, is, uh, which has a high amplitude as well. So from this measurement, uh, the inverter looks okay-ish because uh, it tells us that uh, the IGBTs are switching. We don't know yet that all of them or in what manner, but we know that these specific frequencies are the switching frequencies of the inverter. Moving to the next measurement uh, regarding the three-phase current measure. We might want to follow up the, uh, the measurements uh, by measuring the currents of these three individual phases. It is a non-intrusive test as well, but one has to be really careful when pulling aside the shielding net around the wires. Um, of course, we use uh, uh, the 2000 amps current claps and all the three of them, which uh, uh, was supplied within the new Picascope EV kit. At this point, we could uh, we would like to measure the currents generated by the IGBTs within the inverter. Uh, current is always the consequence. Remember this: the voltage is the cause. Uh, measuring all the three phases at the three at the, at the same time might give us a clue uh, what is going on inside the inverter and uh, and what's going uh, at the end on the motors. This is a reference of a three-phase AC current for this specific model. One might think that the sine waves are not, perf are not perfect, um, and this is the case. So it, uh, it shan't be perfect. Uh, the inverter has uh, to build up quasi sine waves for, uh, from switching IGBTs in a manner of pulse width modulations. And ideally, if you uh, take one arbitrary, arbitrary time slot, uh, the sine sum of all three current values shall be zero. Uh, this is because all the phases, all the three phases, are shifted by 120 uh, degrees of an angle. And uh, if it's not the case, so if uh, we would measure uh, the currents and if it won't look like something similar like this, then the problem is given. And I can tell you here 
that uh, this is the case. So if we have a look on this, uh, it is everything but perfect, three-phase sine wave. It won't win any beauty contest on it, we can agree. Uh, the uh, 120 degree shift could be identified at some regions, but not entirely. The W phase, uh, which is indicated uh, with the green color, goes out of control uh, in at one third of the periodic time and jumps to value, which is almost twice as much as in the other spectrum. So if I would like to show you this, this is what I'm talking about. And this uh, difference is, uh, is tremendous, really. The total collapse could be seen right after, which uh, could be due to a full switching behavior of the uh, IGBTs, um, or because of natural uh, equalization, uh, because uh, it ha the, the motor has a common star point. Uh, whatever uh, is the case, we found out why the motor is rattling, and to some degree we corroborated the, the previous NVH measurements uh, when we identified uh, those extraordinary one-third and two-third order harmonics. At this point, MG2 winding uh, could be faulty, or the uh, inverter could be faulty as well. Insulation resistance measurement could be a good idea at this point, but one has to disassemble all the connections, therefore we postponed it for now, um, but it is a good idea. So now I would like to follow up um, with the IGBT voltage measurement. We would like to have a look on the operation of the IGBTs within the inverter. Here, I must tell you, this measurement requires specialized level of training and degree uh, and the use of adequate PPE and, of course, years of experience in the field. Here, uh, the high voltage system is under testing and over uh, 200 volts of system voltage is present constantly, all the time. We are not encouraging you to take this measurement. Uh, or if so, do at your own risk. So, uh, we are measuring voltage, voltages between UV phase, UW and VW with a uh, active differential probe. This device is capable of measuring up to 1400 volts and it can cope with IT or so-called floating ground systems such as an age, uh, such as an HV system, uh, without the fear of blowing up our precious microscope. Um, a good signal ground to the low voltage side of the active differential probe is crucial. Make sure your laptop has a sufficient grounding as well, otherwise this measurement might mislead you. Since we can uh, only measure between two phases at one time, since the star connection it's, it's not uh, present uh, at the inverter, it's within the, uh, within the uh, uh, motor generator's uh, assembly, um, the voltage can be ranging from minus 300 volts up to 200 volts positive. This value varies with the model, it's uh, of course what we are uh, looking at in the system voltage, and uh, whether this step of this is working or not. So, for example, for this particular model, this voltage can go up to uh, uh, 650 volts as well. So, but this is another story. First, we examine the switching behavior of the IGBTs in order to find anom anomalies, uh, and for example, a dead transistor element or so. If we have a closer look here, uh, we can see that all the IGBTs are working well. The pulse loop modulation also does the job, and uh, there might be some inconsistent ramping up one of, uh, one of the phases, but we cannot uh, see anything strange. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here, so these are the switchings uh, of uh, uh, individual IGBTs. And you can see that uh, by the time, so if I go to the right, 
uh, the switching uh, um, the on time, so the duty cycle, is getting longer and longer. So this is how inverters are making um, virtual sinusoid, quasi sinusoidal waves um, in order to supply uh, uh, the motor in, in order to run. Of course, the control of each and every phase are shifted uh, 120 degrees, but in order to analyze the width of the periodic time, it is easier to slide them uh, to one starting point, as you can see uh, here, just here. When zooming out, uh, the problem which caused the, the ugly currents are pretty visible. The periodic time of each um, phases shall be equal. In, in our case, it's quite the opposite. Taking, for example, the upper U phase, so this blue one just above me, uh, the first half of the sine wave is longer uh, than the other half. So this, this part here is longer than this one. It is visible. It could be due to already being oscillating drive, but uh, not in such a short time. So we are speaking about uh, 20 milliseconds. So it cannot be coming from, uh, from the ground or coming from the oscillations from the road, for example. Now we can say that the inverter is okay since uh, the IGBTs are switching, uh, the pulse width modulation is okay. Um, uh, but we have no clue about the control itself. It is unlikely that the inverter EC went crazy. It could be, but it's, it's unlikely. Uh, so uh, there must be something with the input. A sensor, maybe. There are multiple factors uh, what an inverter ECU takes into um, consideration when it comes to controlling the electric motor itself. Um, there are sensors like temperature, motor generator, uh, temperature sensors, accelerator pedal, brake pedal, resolver, uh, and then this goes on and on. Uh, though the problem is periodic and not intermittent, uh, this leads us uh, to our next test. And our next Possible for sensing the current, uh, uh, the current and accurate uh, position uh, and angular speed of a rotor. Uh, in this case, we are curious of, about the MG2, uh, MG2's rotor. Since it is a synchronous motor, it is very delicate when it uh, comes to this value. This is why removing and remounting uh, in a just as it was position, it is a big no-no for some models like this particular one. Uh, having a look uh, on the wiring diagram, uh, we can easily identify the six wires coming and going from the inverter ECU. Thanks to the isolated channel grounds, uh, we can do this measurement, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which, which you can see on, on the figure just above me. Um, so we can measure the resolver, resolver's excited sine and cosine coils uh, without any problems. And during this measurement, it turned out that there was a huge amplitude difference. So uh, I think I am just covering this, but we can see for the green channel, we have uh, 4.7 volts peak to peak. And for the red one, we have 3.15-ish. Uh, uh, volts and this is a huge difference this shall be equal uh, this explains why the inverter ECU was controlling in such a rhapsodic manner um, it couldn't tell the actual true position of the rotor thus it tried to compensate all the time which uh, eventually lead to a rattling uh, sound and vibration of the motor itself at this point, we still have two options uh, for uh, what could be the cause of, of our problem. The likely one is there, uh, there is an error, a con constant resistance on the wire or at one of the con connectors, um, which is coming from the inverter ECU to the resolver. 
but there is another option, an, un an, unlikely, an unlikely one, uh, which could be the degradation of the coil itself within the housing, but uh, that would be uh, um, uh, really uh, much trouble to disassemble everything and then change it. So we hope, fingers crossed, that uh, the problem is uh, uh, like the first one. As it turned out, it was a circa 1.3 kilo ohm resistance at the connector to the inverter. But remember, if we would do the first measurements on the mother side connector, I know it, it would, would have been hard, but we could do this, we could have started uh, with this measurement, we would measure perfect values since it is an inductance, it is an inductive sensor. Um, so we should be really careful. So at the end, we found a problem, which was uh, related to the one of the connector pins for the cosine compound, one of the cosine compounds. And this pin was slightly bent, and also it was covered in oily residue. It was cleaned out, it was straightened out, and now it, it works perfectly. This problem, which we solved, is another problem which had seemed like a very expensive fault at first glance. But with systematic use of Picoscope, it proved to be a minor, minor electrical problem, uh, which could be solved uh, basically from pennies. Thank you very much for your attention, and remember, test, not guess. See you later.